Okay, so I am Jamie Hope, and I get three pretty intense topics. And I think they saved this to the end of the day because this should scare the shit out of you. How many of you are completely terrified of the thought of doing this in an emergency department? Thank you for being honest. Those of you who aren't raising your hand, I think are either asleep or liars. <laughs> because not only do you have one, you have not just one patient, you have two potentially dead patients. You've got mom and you've got baby, and when this situation happens, you need to know what to do. So first, because this is obviously a very evidence-based type of conference, let's talk about some of the literature surrounding this. So Dr. Katz was an OBGYN, and he did a research on all of the case reports he could find from 1879 to 1985. And of all of those cases, he found some really important points there. So 188 infants survived. That's a big deal. If they hadn't done this procedure, 188 of those infants would not have survived. So underscoring the importance of actually doing this really matters. And the other key point that I highlighted here was that their survivors were within five minutes. So this is timely. This isn't something that you can sit there and think about for 10 to 15 and 20 minutes, phone several consults, and make the decision. This is one of those true blue emergency medicine decisions. You have to make the decision to cut, and you have to do it very, very quickly. And knowing that this is a procedure that we're all uncomfortable with, I'm going to teach you how to have the skills to be comfortable. Now, Katz went back in 2005 and found cases with known time intervals, and he showed increased survival of the cases. But that's not the most important thing. In addition to the infant surviving, there was a case series of 94 patients, and a third of the moms had a good outcome. That's really high in, just in resuscitation literature in general. And that study also demonstrated that nobody, even the non-survivors, suffered a detrimental outcome from having undergone the perimortem hysterotomy. So it's important to do this. Now, I read a really interesting book called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. He was an FBI hostage negotiator. Now, I feel like some of us have that skill in the emergency department, right? <laughs> We're pretty decent at that. But he, there was a quote in that book that I found that's kind of changed my practice in emergency medicine. And it was this. We don't rise to the occasion. We fall to our highest level of preparation. I think that was really helpful. So I'm going to show you that you can be so prepared to do this procedure. When it's in front of you, you'll be ready. So let's start with a case scenario. So we have a 34-year-old patient here who is 32 weeks pregnant. You get the call from EMS that she is having severe chest pain, severe difficulty breathing, and her vitals are getting worse and worse. She is going to be arriving in your emergency department in three minutes. If you did not prepare to know what to do, you're not going to be able to do this procedure and save one or both lives in front of you. But the teaching techniques that I'm using here are very specific and very deliberate. So you're going to hear it, then you're going to see it, and then we're going to review it. So your highest level of preparation is going to be that if this comes into your shift on Monday, you are absolutely going to be able to do this. Are you guys ready? All right. You won't be so scared by the time I'm done with this. So. EMS is going to be here in three minutes. Let's take three minutes to prepare. Can I have you start the timer for me? Nope, you got to nope, you got to go back and then hit play instead of advance. Sally, you promised my timer was going to work for me. <laughs> we were texting about this. And if you can't, that's fine. I was just adding the timer for extra drama. So if it's not going to work, it's fine.
Not happening? Okay, screw it. Just leave, just leave it on the blank slide. It's fine. All right. Forget it. All right. We'll just, okay, forget the timer. They're arriving in three minutes. So within three minutes, you're going to learn the A, B, C, Ds of the perimortem hysterotomy. A, appropriate patient selection. This is any patient who is pregnant at least 20 weeks. How can you tell if somebody is 20 weeks pregnant? Yeah. You've got the fundus at the level of the umbilicus or higher. Easy, right? And who has lost vitals and does not get ROSC within four minutes. That is class one level A evidence to perform this procedure. A, appropriate patient selection. B is the cut. Big, bold, bone to bone. Xiphoid process to pubic symphysis. You need wide exposure. C is cut the uterus, don't cut the baby. <laughs> so you're going to use your scalpel that you used for your bone-to-bone -bone incision and make a hole in the uterus. How are you going to know when you're in the uterus? You're going to get a big gush of fluid. Once you've done that, you're going to take the scalpel out of your hand, your very nervous hand, and put it down. You are going to then put your finger in the hole and get a pair of scissors, and now you're going to be cutting the uterus without cutting the baby and open it. D, deliver the baby. Like any good delivery, it would ideally be head first. Be mindful of the umbilical cord, make sure there's not a nuchal cord or any other complications, and then deliver the placenta. And then the S, the ABCDs, stop the bleeding. So now you have the baby out, ideally you have a second resuscitation team that can work with the baby. And then you want to stop the bleeding. So you want to compress and pack the uterus. At this time, this is not the time that you're worrying about suturing mom up because you're continuing to run the code and the resuscitation. So A, B, C, Ds. It's scary, but it's easier than you think. You guys ready to see it in person? All right, let's do this. I have my handy dandy med students here. All right, give them a hand. They just found out that they were going to be doing this. Uh, who's who's going to be my retractor? All right. <laughs> like all good med students, they're going to be retracting. <laughs> all right, let's see if I can get these on. All right. And you don't need a lot of fancy equipment for that. You need a scalpel. And ideally, scissors that are a smidge more medically oriented. We're working with what we've got here. We're adaptable in emergency medicine, right? All right. Probably shouldn't have put lotion on right before this. OK. Now, notice I'm not doing a whole sterile setup on her. There's not time for this, because your time window is so short. You, she has lost vitals. And so we have four minutes to try and get ROSC, doing all of the usual resuscitation techniques that we know. And we were not able to get ROSC. That means it's time to go. Um, so I'll stand here. Is that easier for you? OK. So we're going to assess the patient. She is clearly more than 20 weeks pregnant. She's lost her vitals, and I haven't gotten ROSC within four minutes. So she is A, an appropriate patient. B, I'm going to make a big, bold incision bone to bone. So from the xiphoid process, we're just going to use our imagination a little bit on the, in terms of the anatomy here. And you're going to cut all the way down to the pubic symphysis. All right. Big, bold, bone to bone. All right. And then, like some of our patients, we might have to go through a couple layers of some subcutaneous tissue. So you can cut. There we go. I don't want to cut the. There we go. Okay. Good. So we want to get a. Now we want to get a big opening. Don't cut your med student either. <laughs> I find that that's poor form. OK. And so now we get good wide open view here. And of course, that kind of went through. So now you want to cut your uterus. Don't cut the baby. So you make a hole in the uterus. Get the gush of fluid. Put the scalpel down somewhere safely, please. And now you're going to stick your finger in for guidance. And it'd be easier if I was doing it on the other side of this model. So I get my finger in. I'm right-handed, so I'll put my left one in. And then I'm going to slide my scissors along. And I'm going to cut 
the uterus all the way open, and now because my finger is a barrier, I'm not going to cut the baby. Okay? All right. This had an extra layer I wasn't expecting. I gotta love Sim, right? There we go. <laughs> Still don't cut the baby. All right. Oh, you did give me an extra. You did give me the uterus. Okay. All right, well, we're just gonna pretend that that's there. Okay. And now, you're gonna deliver the baby. You're gonna check for nuchal cord. Make sure that that's good. And congratulations. You're gonna resuscitate the baby. We're gonna deliver that, deliver the placenta, maybe. And then we are going to start doing that on the mom. We're gonna continue resuscitation. So it's, it sounds scary, but mechanically the procedure is not particularly difficult. And we do all kinds of stuff. Congratulations, you guys. I mean, you, you had a baby. <laughs> nice work. Can we give our med students a hand here? All right. Okay. So, again, just for the quick cognitive review of what we're doing, the ABCDs, you will, this is intentional repetition. You will be able to do this because when this comes up in real life, you're going to be scared shitless. You're going to be stressed. This is a very stressful situation for everybody involved. So, appropriate patient selection so that, there we go. So, 20 plus weeks pregnant. So, uterus to the level of the umbilicus, no ROSC within four minutes. You need to cut this patient, okay? B, so your big, bold, bone-to-bone -bone incision from the xiphoid to the pubic symphysis. All right, C, cut the uterus. Don't cut the baby. <laughs> and then you get the gush and rush. That's how that you know that you are in the uterus. D, deliver the baby. Head first, ideally, mind the cord and deliver the placenta, okay? And then the S is, so stop the bleeding. Pack or press the uterus is how you're gonna do it. And so the only equipment you need, you need the scalpel, you need the scissors. And the most important thing you need for this procedure, you need the stones to do this. Because you saw how easy that was. This isn't a difficult procedure. Cognitively, you all understand that this is really simple. Moms survive this procedure. Sometimes by reducing the blood flow to the uterus, mom actually survives the code. If the baby is 24 weeks or greater, they can often survive this code. What is the possible barrier between their survival and not is sometimes our fear to make that big, bold decision. But now you see exactly how easy this is. So when it does come in, and I'm going to talk about how um, coding and resuscitation and pregnancy is becoming substantially more common. So there is a chance you'll see this in your practice lifetime. Now you know exactly what to do and you're going to be ready. Awesome. Last thing, here are the things that I do not want you to do for this procedure. Don't waste time prepping the skin. I never understood in one of those procedures, somebody wants to take that big bottle of betadine and just squirt it all over and make a huge mess. That's not how betadine works. It needs to dry in order to work, and you're not going to sit there and wait for it to dry. So don't bother. You're just making a mess for no reason and mucking up your view. This is not a procedure that you have time to obtain consent for. This is considered an emergency life-saving procedure and can be exempt from obtaining consent. Don't get an ultrasound. Do not try and assess fetal survival. You're doing this for the baby, you're doing this for mom, but you have to do it within four minutes. You don't have time to be playing around with the ultrasound. And that, this is all, like, this is class A evidence. Don't wait for OBGYN and don't move them to the OR. Timing supersedes location. We can do this in the emergency department because we are badass ER docs and we got this. <laughs>